another video with a new stories from Ethiopia and Somalia. Firstly, uh, Somali presidential election is just a few hours away. We just want to uh, uh, inform you about how this election will be held, how many votes uh, will be required by the candidates to win this election, who will cast votes. Uh, and secondly, is there any horse trading going on? Uh, are votes being bought? Uh, second new story is from Tegarai where uh, some air trucks just uh, uh, an hour ago entered Makale. Third new story is uh, a claim being shared by some uh, activists, some news sources. It is being said that uh, former Ethiopian ambassador to US has defected. He has refused to return to Ethiopia. Uh, he was replaced by engineer Slashi Bakele a few days ago. Lastly, Amhara Regional Government released a statement and a report today a few hours ago. Amhara Regional Government claims that uh, research has been conducted into civilian killings which happened uh, last year in Amhara region at the hands of Tigray fighters. Firstly, uh, Somalia's presidential election is just a few hours away. Uh, the election will be held at an airport hangar. Uh, in Mogadishu, 39 candidates, two have withdrawn, 37 are in this race. Uh, Farmajo, incumbent president, uh, Hassan Sheikh, uh, uh, then uh, Hassan Ali Khare, uh, Sharif Sheikh, uh, Dini, several uh, top candidates are part of this race. Question is, how will this election be held? Who will cast ballots? Firstly, uh, Somali parliament has two houses, upper house and lower house. Uh, there are 329 members of the two houses. So, 329 legislators of upper and lower house will cast votes. And the winning candidate is required to uh, secure two-third majority, means uh, 219 votes. So, if in the first round any candidate uh, gets uh, 219 votes, he will be the president of Somalia. If no candidate succeeds in uh, getting 219 votes, then second round of voting will be held. In the second round of voting, only top of four candidates of the first round will be eligible to participate. Uh, second, then third round will be held. It is being expected that this presidential uh, election will be finalized in the second or third round. So the first challenge for the candidates is to make it to the second round. Question is, which candidates will make it to the second round? Top four candidates, Farmajo, Hassan Sheikh, uh, Sharif Sheikh, uh, Hassan Ali Khair, and the fifth one, Dini. These five, uh, out of these five, four are expected to enter the second round. Let's see. Rumors are going around that uh, horse trading is underway, uh, that MPs are being offered money uh, and this night uh, could be game changer that some uh, uh, weak candidates could turn the tables uh, by offering money to MPs. Let's see. I uh, will update you tomorrow about this key election in the Horn of Africa. 
A second new story is uh, from Tigray, from Makale, where the level of aid to Tigray is increasing, it seems. Uh, 98 trucks just a few minutes ago entered Makale, we have confirmed. Uh, that 90 trucks carrying food aid have reached Makale. Yesterday we reported that 90 trucks uh, were on their way towards Makale. The trucks have arrived in Makale. In the past few days, around 200 trucks carrying food aid have reached Makale. Situation is improving slightly, gradually. So if, if if things improve, yes, uh, the danger of uh, an armed escalation could uh, be averted, which we are seeing, especially on Western Front. But it seems that uh, international communities call some international pressure. It's working. Ethiopian government is now allowing aid convoys to move freely towards Tigray, but still. We'll have to wait. Let's see uh, when will the next convoy depart Samra and arrive in Tigray's capital, Makale. Third new story is about Ethiopian ambassador to the U.S. Former one because a few days ago he was replaced by the new ambassador. His name is Fitzam Araga. He served as uh, Ethiopian ambassador to U.S. throughout Tigray conflict, and just a few days ago, he was replaced by Engineer Slashi Bakale. And Engineer Slashi Bakale has taken charge now. He is uh, Ethiopian ambassador to U.S. What about Fitzam Araga? Is he returning to Ethiopia? Is he reporting back in Addis Ababa? Reportedly, it is being said by some sources that Fitzam Araga has refused to return to Ethiopia. He has defected. He has not uh, rejected or confirmed this rumor so far. But it is being said by some journalists, by some news sources, mostly uh, allied with Tigray. They claim that Fitzam Araga has defected. Question is, why was he replaced? Uh, only thing which I see, uh, which could be the reason behind his uh, removal uh, from the U.S., is that uh, we saw massive diaspora rallies last year. No more movement uh, took out huge uh, rallies across the U.S., especially in, in, in Washington, D.C. last year, when Tigray forces were in Amhara far regions, uh, threatening to reach Addis Ababa. Back then, uh, Ethiopian embassy in the U.S., Ethiopian diaspora, uh, they did a great job in organizing uh, those programs. But after the withdrawal, after the retreat of Tigray forces from Amhara far regions in December last year, we saw that uh, splits emerged in Ethiopian diaspora community. Uh, and we have seen that some diaspora community members uh, who are pro-Ethiopian government, they changed sides and they started supporting uh, HR 6600 S3199 bills which uh, propose sanctions on Ethiopian government. We saw some meetings between Fitzam Araga and uh, Ethiopian diaspora community in the U.S. Demac and McConnell uh, virtually participated as well. But uh, things did not improve. It could be one of the reasons that a new ambassador, engineer Slashy Bakale, has been appointed and uh, Fitzam Araga has been told to report back to Odisha Baba, but he is not returning. We'll update you if uh, Fitzam Araga rejects this news. So far, no statement from Fitzam Araga. He is very busy mostly. He uses social media uh, and he uh, shares tweets uh, regularly. But so far, he is silent. Lastly, a new story from the Amhara region of Ethiopia. Amhara regional government today released a statement and a study, a research. 
the research is about civilian killings in the Amhara region by Tigray fighters last year. Uh, the research was conducted by some uh, local researchers of Amhara universities and secondly, uh, government uh, statistics officer. Researchers claim that between June and December last year, 2021, 6,986 civilians were killed in the Amhara region by Tigray fighters. 3,000 were shot dead. Uh, among these uh, 6,986, around 271 died of starvation and around 7,506 are missing. They were abducted by, allegedly, by Tigray fighters and they are missing. And several mass graves have been discovered by researchers in the Amhara region. Tigray uh, spokesperson Gata Choreda has rejected these claims. He says that his uh, forces are not involved in any civilian killings. Uh, now, it's a research conducted by Amhara regional government. Uh, uh, it would have been better if the regional government had invited some international body, some impartial independent body to conduct such a research. Obviously, Tigray uh, will reject, Tigray has rejected this research. And civilians uh, have uh, lost their lives in Amhara, in Afar, in uh, Tigray. But I don't see justice being served or to be served in, in future. Because uh, regional government's reports are bound to be rejected by other regions. Civil killings in Tigray will be rejected by Amhara, by Ethiopian government. Civil killings in Amhara reports will be rejected by Tigray. So what is required is some international investigation. Will there be justice? Will perpetrators behind these civilian killings in Amhara for Tigray be brought to justice? It doesn't seem very likely because uh, Ethiopian government will not allow international investigators to travel to Ethiopia and local investigations will be rejected by one or the other party. So, civilians are the victims of this crisis. Elite is there, political elite, military elite. Uh, it has not suffered a lot. Civilians have suffered a lot and suffering continues. Thank you for watching.